Welcome to Wayne's Old Time Radio Page channel. I'm Wayne, your host. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. And enjoy the shows. If you'd like for me to get you a shout out, there's a link to PayPal in the description below. Leave us a donation. We'll get it up here for you. Just tell us who you want it to. You, a friend, a girlfriend, a wife, spouse, whatever. And we'll get it up here. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Amos and Andy Show. Andy has always believed that it's impossible for women to resist his charms. He's even further convinced of that since a little incident which took place this afternoon. At the moment, he's in his office about to tell Amos and the Kingfish what happened. Oh, I tell you, fellas, I'm thinking serious of getting me a whip to keep these women's away from me. <laughs> oh, they're still after you, huh, son? Oh, yeah, they hounded me to death. I wonder what there is about me. Well, Andy, I was always hear that there's three things that attract women. Mm -hmm. Money, personality, and looks. Yeah. And after looking you over, Andy, all I got to say is that there must be a fourth one. <laughs> now, listen, don't get sarcastic, Kingfish. Let me tell you what done happened this afternoon. Uh -huh. I was walking along Lenox Avenue when all of a sudden a woman rushes up to me and she say, Harold, is it really you? She called you Harold, huh? That's right. Then she started telling me how happy she was to see me again and wanted to know where I'd done been and all that stuff. Yeah, that's kind of a strange thing, all right, ain't it? Oh, yeah. I'm going to stay in the office here all afternoon. Oh, I'm telling you, it ain't safe for a man as good-looking as I is to be out on the street in the daytime. <laughs> Sit down, Mrs. Scott, and tell me all about it. You say you have found your husband? Yes, Dr. Seabrook, and I'm so excited I can hardly talk. Yes, yes, go ahead. Well, I saw him on the street. My heart almost stopped. I said, Harold? And then he said his name wasn't Harold. Oh. And I must have him mixed up with somebody else. Let me see. He was stricken with amnesia... Six years ago, wasn't it? Yes, six years in July. Where is he now? Did you take him home? No, I didn't get a chance to. He seemed so confused. And then all at once he walked away. Oh? Without knowing it, though, I, I, I followed him. And he went to an office that had the name Andrew H. Brown on the door. I heard a couple of men say, Hello, Andy, as he went in. Well, at least we know where to find him. And he's going under the name of Andrew Brown. Now, are you absolutely sure, Mrs. Scott, this man is your husband? I know it's Harold. His expression, his mannerism. But it's so pitiful the way he's changed. Mrs. Scott, I'm going to suggest something that's been used successfully in many cases of amnesia to regain memory. Yes, Doctor. You go to his office and persuade him to come to your home where he'll be in surroundings that are familiar to him. His uh, personal belongings, the children. Now, don't use any pressure of any kind in trying to make him remember. It should be like a new courtship. I think by treating it in this manner... Now, Brother Andy, me and Henry here has got a great proposition. That is, if you can dig up a little loose cash. Yes, Andy, we're very enthused about it. Yeah, well, what is the deal, gentlemen? Uh, we got the whole idea for a big new company worked out on paper. Uh, here it is right here. Kingfish, read, Andy, the purpose of the company as outlined. Oh, uh, yeah. Now, it says here, uh, purpose of company. Uh, our company is incorporated in the state of New York. For the purpose of making as much money as we can within the laws of said state. Yeah. Uh, now, the next thing here is uh, 
uh, the heading called uh, products to be manufactured. Mm -hmm. uh, any and all things for which there is a demand, and if there ain't, we make something else. <laughs> <laughs> you see, and uh, what we do, we keep the thing wide open, what we call flexible. Yeah. Yeah, now, till we find out what we're going to make, uh, that is the general setup. Now, uh, what do you think of it up to now? Now, that you, you don't hear it? Yeah, well, except for being incorporated, uh, how is this any different from not being in any business at all? <laughs> well, to tell you the truth, Andy... Uh, uh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Uh, come in. Uh, how do you do, Mr. Brown? Uh-oh. Uh, hello. I hope I'm not interrupting anything. Oh, no, no, well, I'm the woman that stopped you on the street this morning. My name is Eldora Scott. Uh, uh, pleased to meet you again, Miss Scott. Uh, uh, this is Mr. Stevens and Mr. Van Porter. Oh, glad to know you. Charming to meet you, Miss Scott. Charming. Uh, thank you. Uh, well, then, uh, me and Henry will go over to Henry's office and see if we can't get this company more flexible than it is. No, uh, I'll walk over there with you, fellas. Oh, please, Mr. Brown. Could I talk to you for just a moment? Well, all right. Well, we'll see you later, Andy. Goodbye. Uh, goodbye. Uh, so long, so long. Do you mind if I sit down? Why, uh, sure. Go ahead, go ahead. I hope I didn't interfere with any business conference. Oh, uh, no, no. Me and the fellas was talking about opening up a flexible thing here, incorporated in the state of New York. Uh, they're going to manufacture something somebody don't want or something. Uh, <laughs> I guess you thought it was strange the way I acted on the street this morning. Well, yeah, but a man like me gets used to that stuff. When you ran away from me this morning, I followed you to your office here. Yeah, I was wondering how you know where to find me. I just couldn't stay away. Hmm. I wanted to see you again. Yeah, you sure has got a bad case of me, ain't you? <laughs> Listen, Harold. Uh, excuse me, the name is Andy. All right, I'll call you Andy. Andy, would you come up to my house this evening to see me? Uh, listen, Miss Scott, uh, you was a pretty gal and a sweet gal, but I happens to be right in the middle of a previous romance, so why don't you drop around in a couple of months from now? <laughs> I is bound to be back in circulation again by that time. But it's so important to both of us. Why don't you drop in this evening, please? Well, all right. I'll drop up for a few minutes, but I can't stay long. Why did Jimmy and me have to put our best suits on, Mama? Because I have a big surprise for you both. What kind of a surprise, Mama? Well, Papa's coming home. Papa? You mean our own real Papa? Yes, dear. Papa's been gone an awful long time, hasn't he? Yes, dear, but the important thing is that he's back. Why was he gone so long? Well, I've explained all this before to you. Of course, we haven't talked about it lately, but Papa had amnesia. What's that? Well, amnesia is when you lose your memory and can't remember who you are or where you live or anything. We don't know what happened, but he might have fallen and gotten a blow on the head. Is Papa cured of it now? No, not quite, but he will be soon. How do you cure it, Mama? Oh, there are many different treatments, Jimmy. Very often, the same thing that causes it can cure it, too. Oh, that's probably Papa now. You boys stay out here in the hall. I want to talk to him alone for a little while in the parlor. Then you can come in. Do you think you'll remember me and Jimmy? Well, maybe not at first. But remember what I told you. Stay there in the hall till I call you. Oh, I'm so happy you're here. Won't you come in? Oh, thank you, Miss God. Thank you. Say, this is a pretty classy joint you got here. You live here all alone? No, I live here with my two children. Uh, excuse me for protruding, but did you say two children? Why, yes. Well, show was nice knowing you. I got to be running along now. Oh, please don't go. Come in the parlor, won't you? Well, uh, uh, all right, just for a minute. There now. Look around. None of the things here refresh your memory. Don't you remember who you are, Harold? 
Certainly I remember. Andy Brown. <laughs> but before you were Andy Brown, who were you? Well, back in school... <laughs> they used to call me the Sheik. <laughs> well, look at this photograph here. Do you recognize it? Say, that fellow look a lot like me, don't he? Got the same extinguished profile I got. <laughs> Only thing, my profile stick out more around the stomach than his do. <laughs> you know something? Oh, wait a minute, dear. Yeah. Frank, Jimmy, you can come in now. Darling, please try to remember. Hello, Papa. Papa, wait a minute, fellas. Wait a minute here. I ain't gonna be your Papa. But Mama told us... I don't care what she told you. I has been give the rush act before, but never with two kids happen out. <laughs> Listen, Jimmy, you and Frank go in the other room for a while. You can come back later. Okay, Mama. Listen, Miss Scott, uh, I think I ought to tell you straight from the shoulder. Please. That, uh, I know it must be all confusing to you, but if you'll just be patient, stay a little longer. I tell you, I'll go in and make you a cup of tea, and I'll be right back. Okay. Hmm. Papa, she's sure trying to snag me. I wonder what tears I got that makes women fall for me this way. I think when I die, I'm going to leave my personality to science. Well, I might as well light one of these cigars and sit back and unlax in this easy chair. I ain't got to meet Madam Queen for an hour. You know something, Frank? He didn't act like he remembered us at all. I'm kind of glad he didn't. He looks like an awful bum, doesn't he? <laughs> Maybe he wasn't that bad when Mama married him. <coughs> Say, I've got an idea. Do you remember how Mama said a blow on the head might cure him? Oh, sure, I remember. Why? What do you say we sneak in and cure him? Oh, sure. <laughs> then he might remember us. Okay. Now, don't make any noise. Wait a minute. Let me have that vase. I want to hit him. Why should you hit him? He's my papa just as much as he's yours. And besides, it was my idea. Oh, all right. Shh. Quiet now. There he is in that easy chair with his back to us. Show sure is nice and peaceful here. Yeah, I might even let Madam Queen wait a half hour for me. <laughs> oh. Well, Andy has finally recovered from the cure that Jimmy and Frank administered to their papa. <laughs> right now, Andy is back in the office telling the boys all about it. Oh, I tell you, them kids really smacked me with that vase. I done always said that I never ought to take off my derby in a strange house. <laughs> Boy, I really got a sock. Uh, tell me this, uh, why do you suppose the kids done that, Andy? Well, I don't know. When I come to, the kids wasn't there, and... Their mama will say they were just trying to help me. Hmm, helping you, huh? Kids sure is funny nowadays. Well, I personally have always felt that children should be seen and never should not slug nobody. <laughs> uh, listen, uh, Andy, uh, with the money that Mrs. Scott has got, uh, you can afford to let them break vases over your head all day. Uh, what'd you say about money? Well, Andy, when you introduced me to her, the name sounded familiar. She is very social in the high circles. I ain't never met her. Uh, she got a lot of money, too, ain't you, Henry? Yes, she has. My wife says she's seedingly wealthy. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, I was talking to Fred Wendell this morning, and he was telling me that her husband disappeared about six years ago. They think he is suffering from amnesia. You know, the whole thing is strange, all right. And didn't you say that she even had a picture on the parlor table of a man that looked exactly like you? Yeah, and she kept on calling me darling and Harold and say that someday I'd understand everything. Say, wait a minute, Andy. I bet I know what this whole thing is about. Uh, she thinks that you is her husband. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And maybe that's why them kids call me Papa. 
Uh, Emos, I think you've got something there. Yes, that sounds very logical. Uh, you see, she thinks that you was her husband and that you won't recognize her because you've got this uh, amnesia stuff. Mm. Andy, listen, there's only one thing for you to do. Get in touch with this Mrs. Scott right away and tell her that you ain't her husband. Yeah, I guess that's the thing to do, all right. Yeah, well, I'm certainly glad that we done solved this one. Well, I got to get to work, fella. But wait a minute, I'll go with you, Amos. So long, fella. Uh, so long, boy. Well, take care of that right away, Andy. So long. How do you like that? This show is a strange coincidence, all right, Kingfish. Mm, uh, it hardly seemed possible that me and her husband could look so much alike. Boy, he sure was handsome. <laughs> well, I guess I'd better phone her and tell her that I ain't her husband. Uh, wait a minute, Ander. How can you be so cruel? <laughs> cruel? Yeah, look, Andy. Here is a woman with two problems. Hmm. She's got a lot of sorrow about her husband. And then she's got a burden of having a lot of money. Yeah, well, what do we do about it? Let's help her. Yeah. Let her handle the saw and let us handle the burden. That's the deal. <laughs> yes, sir, that's even if ever I hear it. And uh, if you was to tell that woman that you ain't her husband, you would hate yourself for the rest of your life. Leaving a poor, helpless woman without nobody to take care of her finances and her business investments. Yeah. And I guess it wouldn't be fair to them two little boys, neither, that calls me Papa and hits me over the head with a veil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that lump will go away, and Yeah, but look here. There's one snag about this whole thing, Kingfish. What's that? I don't happen to be her husband. I know, Andy, but you was a reasonable facsimile. <laughs> uh, brother Andy... If you has got a heart in you at all, there's only one thing for you to do. Let this woman think that you was a husband so you can brighten up her life again by investing her money. Yeah, I guess that's what I ought to do, all right. Yeah, and that way why we can kill two birds with one stone. Mm -hmm. You remember that flexible proposition that uh, I done talked to you about this morning? Oh, sure. Well, we can invest her money in that. Uh, Pretext the principal and guarantee her 20% return at the same time. Yeah, well, the least I can do is be a good husband to that money. Yeah. <laughs> uh, now, listen, man, uh, i tell you what I'm going to do. I was going up myself and see her right away. Well, what's the idea? Well, now, look here. The first thing I'm going to do is to convince her that the way to get back your memory is to finance you in some business. Uh-huh, yeah. Now, another thing. You don't know nothing about Harold. No. You don't even know Harold's middle initial. You don't even know your wife's maiden name. Yeah, that's right. Now, doing the conversation with her, I'll get all that information for you, see? Yeah, yeah, that's good. Yeah, I'll hurry over right away, because every minute we wait is costing her money. I hear about you being married. Oh, I ain't really married, Lightning. It's just that some gal claims that I got amnesia. Oh, uh, what is that? Well, it's, uh, it's when you walks around like you was in a daze and ain't got no ambition, don't remember nothing, you kind of in a fog. She suddenly hit it on the nose, all right, didn't she? <laughs> Get out of here, Lightning, will you? Get out of here. Well, hello there, boys. And I want to speak to you alone. Go on, beat it, Lightning. All right, sir. I think I'll whiz on home and go to bed. <laughs> go along, Lightning. Now, listen, Ander. That was a great thing I done when I went over to see Mr. Scott. Oh, yeah. Uh, what'd you find out there? Found out everything. Your middle initial is J for Jerome. Yeah. Now, her maiden name was Palmer. Palmer. And the picture on the piano or the table... She thinks is you. Yeah, I'll remember all this. Now, listen, Andy. Harold J. Scott has got several thousand dollars in three banks. Hmm. The Chase National, the Irvin Trust, and the Corn Exchange. Yeah, I was really loaded, ain't I? <laughs> yeah, now look here. I done convinced her that the way to get back your memory was to finance you in some business. Yeah, well, we'll go in that flexible company with her. We'll stretch her money out over that. Yeah. Now, listen, Andy. Tomorrow, we are going over to see her together. Hmm. Now, when we get there, be very clever. 
And uh, let her know that you know that your middle initial is J for Jerome. Yeah, yeah. And then casualty dropped that her maiden name was Palmer. Yeah. And then recognize the picture of yourself on the table of piano there. Uh, kind of work it into conversation easy like. Yeah, leave it to me. And the U.S. got thousands of dollars in all the banks in New York. Yeah, well, uh, there ain't but one thing that worries me now about going over to her house tomorrow. Oh, uh, what's that? Who is we going to borrow the car fare from to get there on? <laughs> Mrs. Scott, I've got wonderful news for you. Well, come right in, Dr. Seabrook. Thank you. I'm waiting for Harold now. I just received this letter this morning. Through the Medical Association, we've located your husband. He's in a hospital in Chicago. But, Doctor, it can't be. I've already found Harold. He's right here in New York. Mrs. Scott, you've made a mistake. The man here in New York is not your husband. What? This snapshot, enclosed in the letter I just received, is a snapshot of you and Harold and the two children taken about seven years ago. This picture is your proof. Why, yes. It is our picture. I remember when this was taken, on my birthday up at Bear Mountain. There's no doubt about it being your husband. In addition to all this, the Medical Association checked on his fingerprints. Oh, doctor, I almost made a terrible mistake. I'm going to Chicago right away. But, Dr. Seabrook, this other man, this Mr. Brown, now he's under the impression that he's my husband. Well, that's impossible. Well, we'll straighten him out. The fact is... Oh, doctor, that must be Mr. Brown at the door now. His friend, Mr. Stevens, told me yesterday that they were coming. What'll I tell him? Well, you go to the door. I'll help you handle it, Mrs. Scott. Just let him talk. Thank you, Doc. Well, I brung your husband, Mrs. Scott. He couldn't wait to get out here and see his darling wife. (laughs) Uh, Good morning, Mr. Brown. Hello, wifey dear. Uh, Can we come in a while? Uh, Harold would like to talk to you for a few minutes before we make a tour of the banks. Why, yes, come in. Uh, this is Dr. Seabrook. Nice to meet you. Uh, how you do, sir? Pleased to make your acquaintance. Any friend of my wife's whose maiden name was Palmer is a friend of mine, Harold J. Scott, J. for Jerome. <laughs> uh, let's go in the parlor and look at the picture of myself. There ain't no two ways about it being me. <laughs> By the way, I understand, Mr. Brown, that you had amnesia. Oh, yes, sir, yes, sir. He had a bad case, Doc, but uh, he's starting to remember things now. Uh, Chase National Bank, Urban Trust, Corn Exchange, and all that stuff. Well, yeah. uh, Mr. Brown, there's something I must tell you. Uh, Harold really coming along great, Mr. Scott. Uh, the one thing that he remembers better than anything else is that yesterday you said that you was going to put him in business. But I must tell you... Where is them two sweet little kids of mine? I sure is miss them. Mr. Brown, I've made a terrible mistake. You are not my husband. Uh, Hey, what you mean he ain't your husband? Mrs. Scott's husband has been located in Chicago. Yes, there's no doubt about it. The fingerprints have been checked. Now, wait a minute. After You wait a minute. You're nothing but an imposter. And you're undoubtedly trying to defraud this woman. Well, here, everybody, wait a minute, sir. Now, everybody, listen. I got something to say here, too. All right, uh, so Mr. Brown ain't her husband. Uh, who started this thing, though? Mrs. Scott here done stopped him on the street. He didn't stop her. Well, that's true, Dr. Seabrook. Yes, but the fact remains that this man knew he wasn't your husband. Well, listen here. It so happens that we was going through with it to help Mrs. Scott here with her finances. <laughs> we was trying to help her now, and that's the truth. The doctor, I think I have put these men to a lot of trouble, and I really started the whole thing. I think they deserve some sort of compensation, and I'm willing to pay them for the trouble. Yeah, that's a fair thing to do. Well, you do whatever you want, Mrs. Scott. Tell you what I'm going to do. I'll run down the railway station and see if I can get you a ticket to Chicago. Oh, that'd be wonderful, Dr. Seabrook. I'll see you later. Now, if you'll just step back into the library, I'll make out a check for you. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, you stay right here in the easy chair, Andy. Oh, wait a minute. Don't you think that I... No, no. To... You stay right here, Andy. I got a lot of experiences in this uh, compensation stuff. Yeah, okay, I'll stay here. Then. You know, Mrs. Scott, that fella, Andy... Mama, can we go in and see Papa? Well, I'd rather you wouldn't, boys. Why not? Isn't he cured yet? Mm, cute little fella, ain't he? Oh, gee, Mama. I can't understand why he isn't cured. We tried to help him. Yeah. 
Do you suppose we didn't help him hard enough? <laughs> Boys, I'll explain everything later. Right in here, Mr. Stevens. Say, Frank, come here a minute, will you? Now, about this compensation, uh, Miss Scott, uh, you done caused Mr. Brown a lot of trouble. Now, we'll forget about that, but getting hit on the head with a vase is something that you can't forget about. Well, what about $50? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. The scale price for getting hit on the head with a vase, <laughs> that happens to be $100. Now, that's what they're paying all around town. <laughs> All right, we'll make it a hundred dollars. All right, make it a hundred dollars. Okay. Oh. What was that? Mrs. Scott, it sounds like Andy done earned another hundred dollars. Next Friday night at this very same time, please join us for another Amos and Andy show. For at that time, Amos and Andy will present a special Good Friday show. Our program is broadcast to our armed forces overseas. This is Harlow Wilcox, and before I say good night, may I remind you of one other important thing. I suppose it is a job saving used fats and greases and turning them in. Not a hard job, but, well, not what you'd call glamorous. But it's not exactly glamorous to sleep in muddy foxholes or to dodge bullets or live on tin rations or any of the other things that millions of our American boys are doing every day of this war. So compared to that, the little bit of effort it takes to save used fats and put them in a tin can seems very trifling, doesn't it? And remember, those very used fats are vital to the manufacture of the sulfur drugs and ammunition that will help to win this war. You'll get two red ration points and cash besides for every pound of used fat you turn in. So fill up a can, no glass container please, and rush it to your butcher or meat dealer. Thank you, and good night. These programs are brought to you by support of our listeners. You can give your support at Patreon or PayPal, either one. There's clickable links in the description below. Thanks for your support. Enjoy the shows.